have you ever experienced this while dieting? So things are going well, you are losing weight at a pretty rapid clip, you know, slow and steady, and your workouts are good, you feel strong, maybe you're even still making progress while in a calorie deficit, and you're not too hungry, you're not dealing much with cravings. And then, for no apparent reason, things get harder. They start to become a grind. Your weight loss slows down. Your hunger goes up. Your workouts get harder and harder. You not only stop making progress, maybe you start having to take weight off the bar, or at least you start losing reps on your key lifts. You probably have if you have been in the body composition game for any amount of time, and you've probably wondered why. What changed? Well, most of the time, the major change that seemed to just flip a switch in your body that made it go from easy cut mode to hard cut mode, it has to do with a hormone called leptin. Now, leptin is a hormone that's produced by your fat cells, and it is involved in many functions in the body, including regulating appetite, metabolic rate, motivation and mood, immunity, fertility, and sex drive. And leptin's primary job, at least as far as your body composition goes, is to help you maintain a healthy body weight. So how this works is, your brain monitors your body's leptin levels to understand how much food it's being fed, to understand energy balance, to understand if energy is abundant or if it is scarce. And then based on its determination as to how much energy it's getting versus how much energy it needs or how much energy the, the body's getting, not just the brain, uh, versus how much energy the body needs, your brain can then calibrate various physiological systems accordingly. And so that's why when leptin levels are high, you experience various positive effects. You have more motivation to train. You are stronger in your workouts. You are generally in a better mood. Your metabolic rate is higher. And the reason for that is the elevated leptin levels tells your brain that energy is abundant. It tells your brain that your body is getting plenty of energy. It's getting um, an, enough energy compared to what it's burning. So what that means, practically speaking, is you are probably going to be in at least a slight calorie surplus more often than not, or minimally eating as many calories as you are burning more often than not. Now, on the flip side, lower than normal leptin levels has more or less the opposite effects because that tells your body that energy is scarce, that it's not getting enough energy compared to how much it's burning. And when you restrict your calories for fat loss, for example, leptin levels drop. And anyone who has successfully dieted to lose weight before has experienced this as leptin levels have gone down because of calorie restriction, hunger goes up, metabolic rate goes down at least slightly, motivation to train goes down, and mood goes down. A lot of the negative side effects associated with restricting calories has to do with leptin. Now, another factor that makes getting and staying lean difficult is as body fat levels go down, so do leptin levels because leptin is produced by body fat. So the leaner you get, the more fat you lose, the less leptin your body can produce, period. And the reason why the body becomes more and more resistant to fat loss, and this is one of the mechanisms that it uses to resist fat loss, is it doesn't know what our intentions are. It doesn't know that we just want to get shredded and then we'll stop cutting. All it knows is if current conditions remain for too long, it dies. If we stay in a calorie deficit for too long, we eventually die. And so as the body gets leaner and leaner, it turns up the volume more and more on the different physiological countermeasures it has to counteract the calorie restriction, to erase the calorie deficit and get us to start eating more food or moving less or both. And as far as leptin goes, the stimulation of hunger, fatigue, and less motivation and worse mood are effective ways to convince us to eat more food. Now, on the flip side, if we're eating a lot of food and leptin levels are high, 
the body doesn't want to be eating an excess amount of calories for extended periods of time either, because that too can lead to all kinds of physical problems, obviously. And so when leptin levels are high, we generally feel fuller. We feel more motivated to move around and to burn energy, and we are in a better mood. Uh, we are less likely to eat a bunch of calories to try to make ourselves feel better. Now, you might be wondering how that fits into the context of obesity. Why has the appetite of all these people failed them? Why have they egregiously overeaten for so long that they now are, you know, 30, 40, 50% body fat? Well, it turns out that the total amount of leptin in the body is not the only factor here. There is also the point of how sensitive your body is to leptin's effects. And so what that means then is in obese people, what scientists have found is that leptin levels can be very high, but leptin sensitivity levels are quite low. And so when that's the case, you can have a lot of leptin and symptoms that you would normally see when leptin levels are low, like increased hunger, decreased mood, uh, decreased motivation to move around and so forth. And what researchers have also found is that when overweight people lose weight, when they restrict their calories and drop fat, leptin sensitivity goes up. So total amounts of leptin circulating in the body might go down, but sensitivity goes up and the net result is positive. Another way to improve leptin sensitivity is to eat a lot of minimally processed, highly nutritious foods. You know, the stuff that you have to prepare yourself, the stuff that our moms always told us to eat every day. And although it's not clear if this is the case, that may be why studies have shown that obese people can lose a lot of weight, can lose weight very effectively, eating very bland foods, eating a rather monotonous diet of just simple, minimally processed, nutritious foods, you know, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, stuff like that. Exercise is another very effective way to improve leptin sensitivity. And this one's particularly interesting because in athletes, you have, you often have relatively low levels of body fat, which means relatively low levels of leptin, but you don't also have the negative side effects that you would necessarily expect. And there's good evidence that one of the reasons why this is, is that exercise fine tunes your appetite, so to speak, and it helps you get more satisfaction from the food that you eat. And it also makes you less likely to overeat. And those are things that you normally see when leptin is more abundant, when leptin levels are higher, you get more satisfaction from you feel fuller when you eat food, and you feel less inclined to overeat. That said, that only goes so far. And if you get too lean and try to stay there, you are going to experience negative side effects related to low leptin, regardless of how much exercise you're doing, what types of food you're eating, and even how many calories you're eating to maintain a certain level of body fat. For example, I've experienced this a couple times when I've gotten quite lean for photo shoots. So I've gotten down to probably about 6% body fat or so and tried to stay there. And what I found is while I could stay there, I wasn't able to eat as much food as my body wanted. I wasn't necessarily hungry all that much because I don't generally get hungry, but I just felt like I needed more calories. I needed more food. I also found that my workouts were harder than they should have been. They were harder than they were before I started cutting. So even though I finished my cut and brought my calories back up to maintenance, I didn't really feel that much of a boost in the gym. I remember my sleep would get impacted. It didn't go to shit, but I just would wake up more often and I would feel less rested and my energy levels were a little bit lower. My mood was a little bit lower. Again, all the normal things that you'd expect to see when leptin levels are simply too low. And I wish there were some biohack that I could have used to keep my body fat levels that low and somehow bring my leptin levels up enough to negate the downsides or bring my leptin sensitivity up enough to, to negate the downsides, but there is no such thing. 
You can temporarily increase your leptin levels by eating more calories. Like if you're cutting, for example, and it's getting a bit difficult, it's getting grindy, you can take a little break. You can raise your calories up to around maintenance. Maybe you want to undershoot it by about 10, 10% or so per a calculation and stay there for three to five days. That will temporarily increase leptin levels and you'll feel the difference. But once you get back into your deficit, your leptin levels will just go down again. That doesn't mean, though, that you shouldn't take diet breaks. You should. Every couple months or so, if you have a long cut, it's a good idea to take a few days, eat a bit more food, maybe schedule a deload during that time as well, give your body a little bit of a break, and then get back to it. And also, if you want to optimize the benefits of the diet break, raise your carbs. Just leave your protein and fat wherever it is and just raise your carbs to get those extra calories because research shows that carbs have a much greater effect on leptin levels and leptin production uh, than protein and fat. But the bad news is to raise your leptin production to a stable high level that is going to add to your life, that's going to positively influence your training and your appetite and your mood, you have to raise your body fat levels. You just can't be super lean. You can be lean, but if you're a guy, you can't be 7% body fat and have high leptin levels. It's just not going to happen. And for women, I would say just double that number. So you're not going to be 14, 15, 16% body fat and have high leptin levels. Now you can be about 10% or so, maybe 10 or 11% as a guy and not run into any issues related to leptin. And for women, again, double that, let's say somewhere around 20%, that is realistically maintainable. Now, as with all statements like that, it's not gonna apply equally to everyone under all circumstances. Some guys can stay quite lean, can stay sub 10% body fat and experience no negative side effects associated with lower levels of leptin. And some find 10% fairly uncomfortable and they need to be a bit higher to really feel good inside and outside of the gym. And that's fine. You just have to see how your body works. You have to do your own little experiment like I have a number of times and see how lean can you stay without suffering for it, basically? And if you want to learn more about that, check out the podcast that I recorded on body weight set point. If you search body weight set point, it'll pop up. All right, well, that's everything I wanted to share with you about leptin. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please do give it a like and drop a comment down below letting me know what you thought. And if you really liked the video and you want to be notified when my next video goes live, just click the big red subscribe button over there and then click the bell next to it and YouTube will notify you when I upload the next one. I hope to see you then.